All right, um, let's go over the, um, the game from Sunday first, Florida State. Um, you know, we had a, a lot of young players uh, involved, and this is not to, to set up the uh, mea culpa, mea culpa. Um, that was a disappointing performance. Nobody's happy with it. Um, nobody from LSU um, fan base should be uh, happy with that performance. I'm certainly not. We're disappointed. Um, but we had 11 true freshmen on that trip, um, five first-time starters, uh, four on defense, and we had 14 transfers. So 50% of that roster was going through it for the first time. And I think my comments, I want to kind of elaborate. I said, this is not the team I thought it was. It's, it has nothing to do with their physical ability. I knew who they were physically. But, you know, when you're playing and competing at the highest level, this is about a connection between the mental uh, and, and the mental preparation, the mind and the body. And there was a disconnect there. Uh, the, the disconnect was, it's a hard game. It's, the game of football requires a competitive edge uh, that we lacked in particular the second half. As you know, we got outscored 31-7. to seven. So um, understanding and recognizing you know, how our team was thinking and what they thought about themselves and their beliefs and all of those things uh, come into question when you talk about uh, the performance. Um, because it's not just about talent. It's the ability to put talent and certainly the right way of thinking uh, and what they believe um, and certainly uh, that uh, belief um, was misguided. And that falls on my shoulders. Uh, in terms of messaging, in terms of uh, how we get our players to understand that this game of football um, is very difficult. It's hard to win, especially when you're playing uh, a top 10 opponent. You have to play with a competitive edge, which is a combination of a sense of urgency uh, and emotional control. Uh, those two coming together. Then and finally, you know, you've got to play with uh, an attention to detail and focus. And all of those things, you can pick out situations throughout the game where those didn't come together. So it's my job to make sure that that occurs and that we get that um, taken care of so we can put uh, the right LSU football team on the field. And um, that didn't happen. That falls on my shoulders. It's my job to get that corrected, and we will move forward. So that's a little bit about the comments I made after. Look, um, there were some individuals that did some really good things, um, but it's pale in comparison to, at the end of the day, you're looking for uh, wins. So uh, stand up here and, and talk about um, different players and what they did do. Uh, this is about a full team. Uh, coming together um, and uh, delivering their best when their best is needed. And I did not have them delivering their best when their best was needed. Um, so um, that's, that's where we're at. Um, that's where we need to get to. Um, and um, we'll get there. Because I, I, I promised uh, LSU fans that – uh, we would play this game the right way, and that's not the right way to play uh, LSU football. So we moved to Grambling, um, excited about a home game, obviously, and playing in front of our home fans. Um, uh, you know, clearly an HBCU school like Grambling, one of the historic programs in college football. Uh, we all um, would identify uh, Grambling uh, with the great history of uh, titles and national titles and certainly great players in Buchanan and uh, Doug Williams and, and certainly uh, the great Eddie Robinson. So uh, Hall of Famers and Willie Brown, uh, I could go on and on. Um, this is exciting. I know for anybody that follows college football, um, you know, to top it off, it's a it's school in state as well. So um, I know our, our team is excited about getting back out there and, and playing the game uh, the way it's intended to be played uh, for four quarters, not for two quarters. Um, Hugh Jackson, uh, I think, is uh, 
uh, uh, an NFL head coach that has had great experience now coming into the college ranks, uh, well respected. I respect what he's been able to do. Uh, this is a reworking of his, his roster in one year. This is a, a totally different looking football team. Um, uh, they lost to Hampton in a really good uh, match, and Hampton's a good football team. So um, he's, he's got a club that's going to be um, much improved over last year, and, and uh, they do some really good things. Some nice players. The, the Crawley kids, a transfer from Alabama State. Um, you know, he had over 300 yards. Um, they got some guys on their roster from Baton Rouge uh, in their two deep. Uh, some guys from Louisiana that will be Undoubtedly anxious uh, to, to get into Tiger Stadium and play. Uh, Matthews on defense. They've got some nice defensive linemen uh, that can rush the quarterback. Um, so it'll be, it'll be an exciting opportunity for us to um, take care of what we need to take care of, and that's play this game the right way. Um, as I said, winning's hard, and, and you've got to do all the things necessary um, to make sure that um, – you represent um, the, the LSU brand and um, uh, the history of this program the right way, and, and uh, we'll get that uh, going this week. So with that, we'll open up to questions. Brian Wilson, I'm here from the Advocate. You talk about competitive edge. So then what's the plan, I guess, for or how do you go about restoring that uh, now in the middle of a season when it wasn't uh, evident to you in week one? Well, first of all, we're not in the middle of the season. It's, it's game one, right? Um, and two, it's a recognition of what a competitive edge is. And so some guys played with it and others didn't. But it's not good enough if we don't, if we don't all have that same competitive edge. And as I, I mentioned, it's playing with a sense of urgency. It's when your offense comes out from the, huddle, from the sideline and jogs out you know, to start the next possession and the clock's running down and there's six, seven seconds. That's not a sense of urgency. Uh, it's on defense when the backside corner is jogging across the field uh, and run support instead of sprinting across the field like his life depended upon it. So it's coaching that. It's, it's showing that on film. It's doubling down on the importance of playing with a sense of urgency um, and, and having the emotional control so it doesn't spill out into um, 10 penalties like Florida State had. Um, we had two penalties in the game. So we, we probably had too much emotional control. Um, so it's the balancing act of, of those two things and, and knowing that we're um, early in the season and, and just have to make sure that we're accentuized, accentuation on the, the, the most important facts, um, and that is one of the important facts. Just curious uh, what you saw in the film as far as Harold Perkins' performance. Can this team afford to not have him see ball, get ball? Well, you know, certainly a um, question that we have talked about um, there's a lot going on, um, and you could clearly um, look at uh, Harold and what he's asked to do versus, you know, lining him up off the edge. Um, player development has to be thought about. Um, you know, where he goes uh, at the next level has to be thought about, um, and then impacting our team. So I think that there is a, um, I think there's a happy medium there. Uh, that we could probably strike, uh, and we've already begun to look at um, how we can be most effective for, for Harold and for LSU. Hey, Coach, over here. Uh, Matthew Bruning on three. Just how, do you, how did you evaluate uh, the offensive line performance, uh, especially in the run game against Florida State? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we weren't, you know, obviously – feeling as though we controlled the line of scrimmage um, by evidence of our uh, inability to be effective. But we got to run the football, too. Uh, we, we didn't establish the run the way we need to. Uh, and, and I mean by striking on a much broader front. We've got to run it inside. We've got to run it outside. We've got to be much more balanced in terms of a running attack. 
Um, Jaden Daniels can't be our leading rusher week in and week out. So um, our backs have got to touch the ball. So there's, there's got to be more balance there uh, to get a true evaluation of the offensive line. I mean, when you're talking about just a couple of carries for each back, uh, and you're talking about you know read option situations with the with the quarterback, it's it's harder to get a full evaluation. But in those crucial situations, you know we've got to be better. There's no doubt. And and um, you know like I said, there's improvement uh, from the head coach all the way down to you know um, you know our manager uh, that has to be made here from week one to week two. Um, two questions. Um, you know, I only are getting Mason Smith back this week, but you'll have him back at Tiger Stadium for the first time in a while. How do you feel about that? Giddy. Is that a good enough word? I'd say gritty, but uh, giddy is the best I could come up with in one word. No, I mean, he obviously impacts our defense. You know, he allows us to do different things. Allows us to, you know, he's a guy that can play the five technique. He can play the three. He can play the one, the zero. I mean, his flexibility on our defense um, provides a new dimension that um, we're excited about getting him back. And uh, how do you feel about the first down rule after playing a full game with it in fit? The new, I'm sorry? The new first down rule? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that... Uh, you know, it's going to cost you a few plays here or there, but I don't think it impacts the game where uh, it changes what you do um, strategically. Um, you know, we were able to, to mount a, a drive in, in late in the game, uh, and that's what you're looking for. It was late in the first half. I think we had about 57 seconds. We were able to manage because the clock stops there. So I think in the crucial situations, uh, you know, it's, it's – um, you know, the same thing, it gives you a fair advantage. Uh, it doesn't take anything away in the crucial situations, and uh, I think the, it keeps the game moving. Brian, after watching the film, uh, in particular the secondary, I'm curious, how much of the issues were scheme, communication? How much was their guys were, were just better? Well, I think there's some technical things that we have to be better at. You know, technique-wise, um, you know, we're an inside leverage and supposed to be denying the slant and we're letting a receiver inside us. We're supposed to be denying the post and we're getting run by. Um, is that physical ability? Is that lack of technique? Maybe it's both. Um, so, uh, look, we knew that there were going to be some matchup issues. I, I want to go back to where I started, and, and when I say – this game of football is hard. It requires such an attention to detail when it comes to it's not just about your ability. You have to, you have to apply the technique and the traits necessary if you want to succeed in this game. And, and we just didn't do a good enough job, whether it was at the cornerback position or whether it was at the safety position. If you're supposed to be in a particular position, you need to be there. And, and – that's where uh, a number of things broke down for us, and in particular at corner. Hey, Coach, um, this quote that was going around, we're going to beat the heck out of Florida State. It's my understanding that you said that at your coach's show in jest, and it was taken out of context. I have no idea. I mean, look, I think you all know me. I'm pretty careful with what I say and how I said it. Um, Never have I been cavalier or disrespectful to an opponent uh, in my 33 years. So if somebody wants to prop up a comment like that and um, inflate it into something that it is not, that's what social media is about today. But I have nothing but the utmost respect for Coach Norville. I know who the opponent was. It's just not in my background or nature to, um, to make those kinds of comments. I just wanted you to clarify because I saw it and I never heard you say it and it didn't sound like something you would say. Yeah, it's just, like I said, the, the, the position of head coach or any leadership position, you're, you're going to get things thrown out there that are absolutely untrue and you have no way um, to, to combat them because you can just sometimes just throw stuff out there and hope it sticks. Um, but that's not something that I would ever say.
Hey, Coach Glenn West, Go247. I know you had mentioned last week that you were impressed by some of the progress the freshman class have been making. Do you expect, I mean, after a game like that, to have a lot of questions about kind of personnel and if those young guys might get some more opportunities going forward, or how do you kind of evaluate that aspect of it? No, I, you know, I think, look, any time you have a setback, um, you're, you're going to examine everything. You know, you're not you're not going to have blinders on and and say, well, you know, the ball just didn't bounce our way. Um, you're going to examine everything um, from, you know, uh, play calls to personnel to um, what time did we leave the locker room? Um, so all of that is is under scrutiny. Hey, Brian, Sheldon Mickles, the advocate. Um, the, you were really good last year in the red zone, and so the other night, I think twice in the first half, obviously, two first two periods, you got no points. Uh, what did you detect after watching the film? What what were the breakdowns there? Um, I think when when we talk about most of the issues that we had on both sides of the ball, um, it will come back to – um, being one eleventh of the unit, um, meaning do your job. Um, we had guys that in situational football um, were trying to do three other jobs instead of their own job. And if we were more disciplined and more focused and had the details uh, to their job taken care of, uh, we would find ourselves in a different position. And that's why um, my comments were um, on point relative to after the game. We weren't who I thought we would be. I thought we would be much more disciplined. I thought we'd have a, a better attention to detail when it came to those things. And we did not. And that's on me. And so I have to make those changes. I have to make those corrections. And um, we have to do a better job there. Yeah. Brian, when it comes to Aaron Anderson, is he going to yeah. get a chance to continue to catch punts after having the muffin? Would you like to see him more involved in the offense moving forward? Um, yes, he's going to stay back there. Um, look, he's got to catch the football. And, and, and with, with him, it's the fundamentals, right? It's, it's high hands, elbows in, square platform. It's the stuff that we talk about ad nauseum from day one. And, and he gets away from that a little bit. Um, he, he goes back to these old beliefs of, I'm better than everybody. And I can just do it. And that just doesn't work. Especially when you got cats running down the field and they're on you before you know it. And then you make a slight move and, you know, you're, you're off-centered a little bit and the ball can squirt out. So we just got to get him to be more disciplined, uh, keep working with him. He's a young player. Um, we're, not, we're not kicking him out of the club. Uh, we're going to keep working with him. And then, yeah, there's then that natural progression of, you know, getting him back involved in, in more of the offense. Bryce Coon, 24-7 Sports. You talked on Sunday about seeing needing to see choices be made from this roster, from these guys. Is that something that you can see those markers – during practice, or is that something that you kind of have to see during the game? I mean, when you go back and look at that, just for going forward for this week, I mean, are you really not going to see anything until they get into that game atmosphere? Um, no, we'll, we'll, we'll begin to see those things uh, during the week because we'll, we'll enact a different plan in, in terms of what we're talking about and, and what we need to see from our players. Um, so it, it'll be a little bit different. We'll be able to get some instant feedback um, in how our guys are thinking. Um, we got to get them to think the right way. Um, and it starts with what they believe. And, and uh, if you believe in the, the things that we're talking about and, and you're invested in them, um, then you're going to think the right way. Yeah, Brian, right here, uh, injury report update and, and uh, a John Emery update. Uh, injury report would be uh, Amani, would still be questionable. And then the only one would be Anderson, which would be uh, probable. And then? Yes, uh, so uh, he's not available uh, this weekend. 
Hey, Coach. Uh, just right down here. Do you think there was enough creativity with the play calling offensively uh, from this past week? Yeah, I'm not going to get into <laughs> creativity on the offensive side of the ball or the defensive side of the ball. Look, our execution wasn't where it needed to be, right? You, you saw fourth down. I mean, we didn't execute to the level that we needed to execute. Um, and, and then – you know, we scored seven points in the second half. We had we had miscues. Um, you know, we slip and fall and throw a pick. We drop some balls. Um, you know, it, it it was. Look, everybody's accountable. The offensive coordinator, the head coach, the wide receiver, the quarterback. We win and lose together in in this. So. Um, you know, whatever narrative that we want to paint in this game, yeah, everybody could have been better. Yep. Uh, Brian, I'm just curious, how much does last year's past history help in this process moving forward? Obviously, different score, but same results, and you guys were able to achieve a lot last year. I'm just curious, does the schedule also help you build this team as it progresses? The circumstances are a little bit different. Um, you know, th this team in itself um, requires um, – it, it, each year is different, you know. Um, this, this team is a different team than last year's. So – and, you know, I had a reasonable expectation that we could be a little bit further along. Um, you know, we, we, have to, we have to go back and make sure that um, – we put another coat of paint on this, is, is what I'm saying. And, and um, that's really the most important thing. And then we'll see where it goes from there. That other, the, the teams last year um, were able to take hold of, um, you know, how hard it was to win. Um, they, they had the taste of finishing last. This group did not. Um, so um, it's a different team, and, and this will have different challenges. Hey, Coach, over here, uh, Jay Swisherman from Ground Football. I know you talked about the passing game with Jay and Daniels. Uh, there were some plays that you all made, obviously, but the draw passes, the inconsistencies there. So uh, just elaborate on just the passing game, what you thought about that overall throughout the entire game. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's – I mean, I could go through a number of different situations. You know, we, we don't get to the – uh, the chains on on third and and five, you know, we're short on the chains. What are you thinking in those situations? You know, what, what's your thought process? Um, you know, we we we've got a drop here on third and six. You know, we're trying to turn up field. Let's secure the catch. You know, um, you know, we're fourth and one, and um, you know, we're trying to make a play instead of you know reading what the defender is giving you. Um, you know, I could elaborate further on defense. You know, we're spinning down a safety to sit in the curl. He's watching the quarterback. Um, you know, we could have been more creative with play calling. Um, we could have been better defensively and, and, and making some less spy calls and bringing more pressure. I mean, I could attack the whole thing. The bottom line is I've got to get our football team thinking the right way and play with a competitive edge. And football, this game of football, it is hard to win. If you don't play with a competitive edge, if you are not locked in and disciplined and focused, we can have a conversation about all these things all the time. If you have a competitive edge, if you recognize how hard this game is and you're focused, none of the crap that I just mentioned will matter because they'll overcome it. Okay, thank you.